WSAV News 3 has uncovered evidence that Chatham County Sheriff Al St. Lawrence may not be performing his functions under the Georgia State Constitution. And upon investigating, we've received varying... I, I retain the right to ask the questions that I want to ask. No, you don't. You can leave the building. I retain the right to kick you out. And sometimes bizarre responses. The revelations come after months of examining the details in the deaths of four men in custody of the Chatham County Jail last year and pending lawsuits against the county and their third-party health care provider, Corizon Correctional Health Care. The housing and care of inmates is one of the sheriff's assigned duties. Yeah, I just need to go to the hospital. In February, when News 3 aired the disturbing jailhouse recordings made by Matthew Laughlin before his death last year, a sheriff's spokesman said it would be weeks before the sheriff could be interviewed on the topic, but gave no explanation as to why. When we asked if he was performing his constitutional duties, we were referred to Chatham County Attorney Jonathan Hart, who did not respond. But the day our story of Laughlin's recordings aired, Sheriff's Deputy Mark Capers was fired from the jail for excessive use of force. Two days before that, another jail deputy, Dion Gibson, was fired after being charged with sexual assault in the jail. News 3 obtained their personnel files and could not find any document that demonstrates the sheriff participated in those firings. And his signature is not at the bottom of any of their termination paperwork even though firing deputies is another responsibility of sheriffs in Georgia. Whoa, 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 whoa. And when new jail deputies graduated in March, spokesperson Gina Bilbo told the assembled crowd the sheriff was quote unquote under the weather and could not attend. So there was no swearing in of the new deputies, another function of the sheriff. You're not Excuse hijacking me. him. No, You're I'm not hijacking him. And when we asked for an explanation, the response was hostile. He's a constitutionally elected this. officer. Yes, and you can talk to our so, lawyer, so when, as I've told you. So when will the oath of office be administered? Because he's in the, the only in, in the morning. You're welcome to come see it. We, we can. What time? The outburst included professional threats, and a deputy escorted me from the building. The next day, instead of letting us attend the swearing in as promised, they distributed this still photo of the sheriff from behind performing the oath. And you see Chief Al St. Lawrence there. But if the odd angle of the photograph had anything to do with the sheriff's appearance, it did not show a week later on St. Patrick's Day, where the sheriff has been a staple for more than a half century. Which brings us to last Wednesday, when Judge Penny Haas Friesman ordered the sheriff to submit to a deposition in a legal fight over documents in the inmate death cases. At the deposition, less than 24 hours later, the sheriff was a no-show. When we asked why, his spokesman Bilbo said she wasn't aware of a deposition. His chief deputy wouldn't comment on pending litigation and said the deposition was canceled. Then he said it was postponed and referred us to the county attorney. And when we confronted County Attorney Jonathan Hart on Friday of last week... Do we have order? No. I'm, I'm concerned the sheriff is not performing his constitutional duties. I think my question is pretty simple. You haven't returned my phone calls or my emails, and you didn't show up to a deposition yesterday. For the record, the Chatham County Commission has no power over the sheriff's office. Chairman Al Scott, quote, the Chatham County Sheriff is an elected constitutional officer. My responsibility is budgetary only. Therefore, it would not make any sense for me to comment on non-budgetary matters, unquote. Other than the voters of Chatham County, the only person who wields any power over the duties of the sheriff is Georgia Governor Nathan Deal. The law allows Deal to appoint the state attorney general and two other sheriffs to investigate whether a sheriff is capable of performing the functions of his office. We notified the governor's office of our plans to air this story and asked them to comment upon its conclusion. We'll let you know what they say. I'm Dave Cartoonin, WSAV News 3. Also this morning, the sheriff of Chatham County, Al St. Lawrence, is incapacitated and Georgia law is clear about what should happen next. But no one at the county has informed the governor's office or the voting public of the sheriff's condition. So who is running the department? It was a statement in open court Friday as stunning in its news as it was in its total lack of reaction. Attorney Willie Yancey arguing for a reduced sentence for his client, former Corporal Jason Kenny, in the death of Matthew Ajabati. Making my closing argument, I call the sheriff of this county incompetent. I would like to bring that back in when I learn through my investigation that the sheriff is incapacitated. 
And Mr. Yancey makes the statement standing over Assistant District Attorney Christy Barker and yields no objection. I'm going to ask that this be stricken. Even though prosecutors objected to other statements of fact throughout the proceeding. WSAV News 3 has learned from two sources with knowledge of the sheriff's condition that Al St. Lawrence was diagnosed with terminal cancer earlier this year and has not made any public appearances in months. And yet, no county leader has disclosed the sheriff's incapacitation. Why? The answer may lie in a key difference in Georgia law. Georgia Title 15, Chapter 16, deals with the line of succession for sheriffs who are elected state constitutional officers. If a sheriff is incapacitated, the governor must direct the attorney general and two other sheriffs in Georgia to conduct a 30-day investigation. The governor may suspend and then ask the district attorney to petition for removal of the sheriff. However, if a sheriff's office becomes vacant due to the death of a sheriff, in this case, Chief Deputy Roy Harris would take over the job immediately. A special election must then be held within six months to pick the next sheriff and with no investigation. We notified the governor's office of our reporting and asked the chief deputy, the county commission chairman, Al Scott, the county manager and the county attorney, why Chatham County's voters have not been notified of their sheriff's condition. Thus far, we have not gotten a response from any of them. There are, however, real consequences for Chatham County while there is no one executing the powers of the sheriff. One source tells News 3 that at the Chatham County Detention Center, where 10 inmates have died in the past three years, they are understaffed currently by dozens of sworn deputies. And only the sheriff has the constitutional power to swear in new deputies. Al St. Lawrence, of course, has been in area law enforcement since 1959. He's been the Chatham County Sheriff for the past 23 years and had a distinguished career. And our thoughts and prayers go out to the sheriff, his family, and all of his many friends.